Hello everybody, I'm Wolfhead207 and it's time for a third person perspective review. Now, you may ask yourself, why? Why? What's different between your first person perspective review and third person? Well, first, that should be obvious. I'm actually in front of the camera right now and I'm speaking on behalf of looking over the game, analyzing what it's worth, and then speaking on it. And since it's an early access game, that's not 100% easy. It's not 100% easy for me to get in front of the camera and say whether this game's good or bad or not because it could change within a week. So I gotta look past of what the game is now, and I gotta look what the game is gonna be later, essentially. Or, I could just look at what the heart of the content is, which is what I hope to do right now. Now, I'm gonna start off with some of the pros, some of the things that this game did right, that I really did enjoy. The first up is essentially the simplicity of the game. The game is really simple. It's kind of hard. It, it's one of those simple to learn, hard to master sort of games where it's like, yeah, I can understand what the hell you're supposed to do. However, doing that is kind of hard to do over time. And that's a really good prospect for this game. I really do enjoy that. And this game has re really good music that really does fit the atmosphere and I can tell they're kind of going with a creepy vibe and that, that really does excite me. And on top of that, this game has some really good potential for it. I mean, just looking at the story arcs and the stuff that you can get into later, man, this looks like a really, really, really good game for like storytelling and whatnot. And that would be really cool. Unfortunately, the stuff I don't like is almost everything else. Like, I don't like how your ship moves. I don't like how your ship turns. I don't like how, optimally, you look at the game and you ask yourself this. What is this game about? What is the concept? What is the story while we're here? The story is, London was taken by bats. I'm serious, that's a story. Not joking here, that's what it says. You don't believe me? You can fucking look at it. I, that's not a... And you, can, you can wing that. You can actually wing that. That's not a big problem. The problem is the concept itself for me. The concept is... You're an undersea captain. With a bunch of weird and crazy stuff going on. And that's where the idea kind of falls apart right there. Is the implementation of that idea not only isn't 100% complete, because there's a lot they still have to add in, there's a lot they still have to do. However, they don't really have a very good foundation for it. I feel like this game features a massive identity crisis on what it really wants to be. Does it want to be a very easy, simple, pick up and play sort of game and then put a, put down and deal with it in a couple hours? Does it want to be a roguelike where you can just really maneuver around and then boom, you could be dead and then you restart up a character? Do, does it want to be an adventure game where you could get immersed in the story? Or does it want to be an RPG where you stat build like crazy in order to make a really awesome ship and crew? or? This game has no fucking clue what it wants to be when it grows up. It doesn't. It has no clue. It doesn't know if it wants to be survival. It doesn't want to know if it wants to be adventure, RPG, any of it. And that's a kind of a hard pill to swallow whenever you're asking us to put up our money, damn near $20, for a game that doesn't even know what the fuck it is. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. It doesn't know where it wants to go. It wants to have adventure, but it has text-based environments with no pictures to describe what the hell is going on. And it's not even the good kind of text-based environments where the pictures change, like they put in enough detail to actually make the things change a little bit to give you a sense of what's going on. Not even like immersing you in full fallen fall London, like bringing you to a whole nother screen. No, they just keep you like in this fucking little book right in the center of the screen where you flip through like a page. And I don't even get the page concept. 
that doesn't even 100% make sense. Like, why would you not immerse the people in fallen London? Give them a sense of what they're looking at. And the only thing I can really look at and think about that is either there, it's an artistic choice to be like, oh, well, we, we don't want to pull you away from the sea because you're on the sea all the time. And you're, you're forever going to be on the sea and it's going to be really awesome on the sea. And I'm like, I don't... There's a lot of stuff in this game that just... It doesn't work right now. And based on its identity crisis, I'm not 100% sure it's going to work later. Now, mind you, I don't hate this game. I don't. I can spend hours of playing this game. I really can. However, when I'm done playing a session, I never feel like, hmm, I spend my time wisely. No, I more or less feel like, hmm, I'm dead again. Oh, look, I got cursed. <laughs> that, that's awesome. I only said I didn't want the sailor. <laughs> he cursed me. That's great. Oh, look. My terror meter went up 9,000 points. Everybody's dead now. Good job. Why am I fucking playing this game? That stuff happens all the time. There's a lot of unfair consequences that go into the thing. There's a lot of just BS that continues to happen. Literally, if you're not screaming BS after every single event that ends up happening to you in this game, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you have to be extremely wise, extremely fucking wise, with your investments, with what you're doing. You have to be so free. Oh my god. Yeah, you have to be really really fucking intelligent on what events you use or how you're gonna get to a location and the devs haven't given that any thought at all either like before it kinda made sense a little bit because everything was close by and it gave you a sense of okay well I get to see all this stuff and now they kinda spread everything out to in order to I guess kind of like add in a little bit. I don't even know what the hell they were trying to do. They ended up grabbing all the stuff that was right by the starter island Fallen London and then they ended up moving it to like the upper right hand of Fallen London and it takes a ridiculous amount of fuel thanks to the fact that they didn't rebalance it correctly they, did, they didn't rebalance the fuel correctly. Don't even try to argue with me on that. They didn't it really does suck. It sucks up so much fuel. I even have a guy that works on my fuel efficiency. It does nothing. The fuel goes by ridiculously fast. It's almost faster than the terror counter whenever you actually get into the open sea, which I get to talk about the terror counter now. Essentially, whenever the terror counter gets up to 50, strange stuff starts to happen. Like you start to see certain things. You start to hallucinate. You start to get nightmares. You start to like have all sorts of problems and this can be battled back a numerous amount of ways you can lower down your terror but essentially you have to get rid of the nightmares then and you have to get rid of this stuff and you have to get rid of this stuff and all of it is gonna cost either money time or fuel and those you don't have any of at any point like one of the and then, just for kicks, dumb things is you can actually send a skeleton crew to go collect money on a pirate vessel. Skeleton crew goes down to less than half of your total. Of your total, not a certain number, but of your total, then you lose like one of the speeds, your, your top speed. Which basically means if you're way stuck out of there, out there in the boonies, you could be in some serious trouble, especially if it fails and you didn't get anything out of it. So more often than not, you're going to end up scuttling like freaking all sorts of ships just to grab their treasures because it was completely pointless to try to send them over there. More often than not, it's completely like that essentially could be the tagline for this game. Sunless Sea, completely pointless.
because a lot of the stuff you do here feels like that. It feels like right now that this is more or less a beta that the devs don't want you to win. They don't give you enough resources. They don't give you enough stuff. They, everything has a ridiculously high cost. And when I say enough stuff, I mean you should be able to trick out your little ship to be like a mini battleship by what they have on here. But instead, you have to rely on cheap tactics to outthink the devs for a second until they remaster, until they redo the game, and then they're gonna end up taking that out. I just, it really does, it'll piss you off real quick. It will piss you off with the quickness. What they're essentially going for, I can only guess with some of the choices they did with environment and combat and stuff like that, they're going for more of a Dark Souls feel. Where if you wander into an area, you're going to get your ass handed to you. But, then, but on the flip side of that, in games like Rogue Legacy or uh, Dark Souls or any of the games like that, instead of actually, you know, providing you with some stuff here, like... Uh, instead of, like, providing you instant respawn or instant comeback and pound on the enemy to figure out a way through it, you actually had to save before then, otherwise you're going to spend the next 40 hours getting back to where you were. And I'm not joking, you can spend up to 40 hours playing this game and then you'll be able to fight some of the higher level monsters. Then. Which, a lot of people will probably be going, no duh, but I don't like it. I don't like it for such, for a game that already has autosave, for a game that already has a lot of different things, it seems a little pointless, especially to me, that it, one, autosaves on your death, which it shouldn't, because this game essentially, like, roguelike is supposed to make it easier, more and more and more you go through. Essentially, that's what a roguelike is. Essentially, if you look at why Rogue Legacy had all those weird abilities past the first guy, because it's supposed to make it easier, it's supposed to make it funner, it's supposed to add on stuff to it, it's not just supposed to be like, oh, well down guy and I got my ass kicked thanks it's not supposed to be like that it's not supposed to you take 40 hours in order to get back to where you were it, it really isn't supposed to be like that and it feels unfair and I could understand if it was the type of unfair where it's like oh well you fucked up and a lot of games are like that. Some of the best games out there are like that. Mario, Mega Man, Dark Souls, all sorts of games. Demon Souls, all sorts of games. All sorts of games are basically just saying, well, we put the situation here and you fucked up. Sorry, but you did. This game kind of approaches the situation as, oh, well, tough luck to you. Guess you got screwed this run around. How about you try another 40 hours, you know, and give us more time on Steam so it looks better for our records. That's what essentially it feels like. And I just don't like how long it can take to get to one thing to another. It has to be considerably shortened down from that point that which you die and to the point that which you can build back up again. It has to be considerably more streamlined. It has to be considerably more shortened down. Otherwise, who the hell is going to play your game? And then on top of that, the terror meter. That has to be slowed the hell down. Who the hell gave the terror meter crack? And on top of that, who the hell thought it was a brilliant idea to create a light sphere around our ship whenever we're near the coast. So basically, like, to get anywhere, you have to almost hug walls the entire way through. They do have, like, certain light, beaten, light beacons, but, uh, 
And that really doesn't help you at all. At all. Especially whenever you're like trying to get from one area to another. Most of the direct ways feature maybe one or two light beacons just to get directly to an island. And more often than not, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It really is. The fact that your chart goes away whenever you die. The fact that everything goes away whenever you die. The fact that they don't even have like a junk island to get back your stuff. The fact that they have virtually no immersion when it comes down to your ship and crew and everything. They basically take everything out of the game and then go, yeah, I hope you have fun with that. I mean, it's nothing like you expect, and it's nothing that I could really recommend right now. Honestly, I gotta say, is I just don't like the game. I mean, I like it, but I don't like it nearly as much as I thought I could. The idea of what the game is bringing to the table just doesn't seem enough to me. So, I was kind of thinking here, I didn't want to, I didn't want at first to like assign a score. Then and when I thought of assigning a score, I was like, okay, well maybe I'll give them like a 7, but it's not a good game. Maybe a 6 out of 10, it's, it's above average from the rest, but and I looked at it and it's not. Essentially, it's just a re, reskinned RPG overworld with crappy turning. Good job, that's not good. Essentially, I had to really look at it, and it's below average. It's a 4 out of 10. Now, I'm not saying that this game doesn't have potential. It has potential to be good. But unfortunately, what I'm looking at right now is not the potential to be great. And whenever you pick up, you pay money on a Steam Early Access game... You would imagine that you'd go for the one that has to be great. This one just doesn't feel like that to me. But, in the meantime, I'll be Wolf 8027, and I'll see you guys on the next Wolf 8027 Reviews. Take care.